WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. The North Carolina primary about a month and a half away now. And for the next six weeks, we'll be chatting with the candidates running for city council at large, getting a look at their priorities for the city and why they're running so you can make an informed decision. Our first set of interviews coming up in just a little bit. First today, this past week, City Council passed the 2040 policy map. Now, it is a companion piece to the 2040 comprehensive plan. The map provides guidance and sort of a guardrail for future development and mobility near the places you live, places you work, places you play. The different colors of the map represent different neighborhoods, parks, commercial space, and a lot more. Joining us today on Flashpoint, Sam Spencer, former chair of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Planning Commission. Sam, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. So I feel like local TV news has sort of struggled to tell the story of the Charlotte 2040 plan because it's wonky, it's it's complicated, it's cumbersome. So, so let's get into the weeds of this thing. Uh, we just showed the policy map. Let's start with that. Wh why should folks at home care whether they live in, in a neighborhood one or a neighborhood two or if they live near a community activity center? What what can they do armed with that information? With this information, people can know the direction that their neighborhood is going in. And why that's important is because there's so many changes happening in our community. And it's very important to know the direction of your neighborhood if you want to give informed input to the Charlotte City Council, for example. So one of the things, one of the major challenges that we faced um, really, you know, for a long time before we um, got into this process was that we had these outdated area plans. So, for example, I used to live on the east side of Charlotte. I was in the Eastland um, area plan. It was made in 2003, back when Eastland Mall was still in operation. You know, not only still standing, but it, it was still vibrant and in operation. And clearly, an area plan that has Eastland Mall. How does that impact people? What area plan they're in? Because I'm sure that's the next question people are wondering. Yeah, absolutely. So previously, everybody was in an area plan. And these were old, outdated plans, but due to North Carolina law, they are the number one most important thing we have to consider as planning commissioners and as a city council when we do rezonings as part of that process. So the number one criteria was whether or not something was in line with the area plan. And what was happening was that these plans were getting massively out of date. And Charlotte has been a changing dynamic city for years. Um, so we've exploded since the 80s, since the 90s. And so one of the things that we found out in this process, when we started the um, UDO process, the comprehensive plan process, and the policy mapping process, is that so many of these plans were outdated so they weren't giving good information and a good informate in a good basis for planning um, to the planning staff, planning commission, or city council. So at the end of the day, the big important change here, the if you take away one big idea from the 2040 policy map, it's that we have a new updated map. Um, that reflects where Charlotte is really going as opposed to where it was going 20 years ago. And uh, this policy map is a lot easier to update than these old outdated area plans that had to go through a huge community process that took years. I've always said on, on Flashpoint, rezoning is the most important, least sexy topic there is, but but it, it affects everything that we do. And, and this plays into this. And, and it's not too late for people to chime in. I want to have a handy graphic we actually took from the city of Charlotte, and this helps people sort of understand the process because there on the left, you've got the 2040 policy map uh, that's been passed. You're going to take that, use that in conjunction with a strategic mobility plan, and then all that is going towards what's called the UDO, or the Unified Development Ordinance. And that is going to be passed this summer by city uh, council. And, and so folks still have a, a chance to, to weigh in, talk about this, explain what the, the idea behind the UDO, because that's the, that's the big kahuna. Yeah. So I think you can think of it like uh, airspace a little bit. So up here, 
30,000 foot view, the, the airplane, that's the comprehensive plan. Um, that's the overall plan, that's our vision for the city, but it's not really granular. Um, we just did the policy map and that gets a little lower. That's like a uh, helicopter level. And that shows what really each neighborhood we're looking at. And then the UDO is the ground level plan. Um, so that's what your built environment looks like. That's uh, things like setbacks, like design standards. And so you put it all together and you really have a comprehensive vision for planning in the city of Charlotte. What would you say to the person watching at home says, they might as well be speaking French. I don't know what they're saying, but I want to be involved. What would you say to those people? Absolutely. So f first of all, one of the great things about the current planning design and development department is that the level of public outreach that we've done on the comp plan, on the policy map, and on the UDO is unprecedented. Um, we have never had a you know eight cylinder uh, full city municipal government effort on this sort of thing. It's been amazing. So you can go to the UDO website, you can go to the policy map website, you can go to the city of Charlotte website, and there are all these entry points where you can reach out to our planning design and development part department all the way up to our um, interim director, Allison Craig, and you can get involved with all of these. It's, a, it's a, a case to be made for being an empowered voter and neighbor and invested. And hopefully um, just this few minutes we've spent talking with you uh, helps people sort of take that next step um, and taking action and being involved. Sam Spencer, thank you, sir. Appreciate it as always. Any, anytime. Thank you, Ben. All right. Take care.